Hello everybody, my name is Shibuno Aji Berry from NYU Koran Institute, and today I'm going to show you something very interesting. Last time, we talked about the Cesaro summation. Well, that was the time before last time, how it can be used to some mildly divergent theories, like Bondi series, 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1, etc. But then there are some series that cannot be Cesaro sum, like 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4. Now, the lecture before this one was on how the able sum actually works, but not how it's used. So, Today, we aim to provide some insight into that, as well as some other methods for summing this up. And finally, this allows us to get a good heuristic reason for why 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 technically sums up to minus 1 over 1 twelfth. Alright, so let's get into it. So, first of all, let's try Cesaro summing this sequence first. So, Cesaro summation is essentially taking the means of all the partial sums. So, the sum of all the partial sums is what we first have to take. So, the partial sums itself are 1, minus 1, 2, minus 2, 3, minus 3, etc. Then the sums of them, as we go on, are going to be, well, the partial sums of the partial sums are going to be 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, 0 plus 2 is 2, 2 minus 2 is 0, 0 plus 3 is 3, 3 minus 3 is 0, and so on. Now we divide this by 1, this by 2, this by 3, this by 4, this by 5, this by 6, etc. to get the means. So you get 1, 0, 2 thirds, 0, 3 fifths, 0. Now unfortunately, if you put these in decimal expansion, you will see that it continues oscillating and never really reaches anything below one half except all of these weird looking zeros all right so how do we sum this then well we need something slightly more advanced in fact euler summed this before abel himself oh that looks stupid when he conjectured that it was equal to one-fourth. Now, how did Euler see through this? Well, let's look at Taylor series for a good idea. In fact, this can be considered, rather, as 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared plus 4x cubed, etc., where x is equal to minus 1. So you have 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4, etc. And then, from then on, just because of the increasing exponents, one would think it's natural to look at Taylor series, which are expansion to functions, in order to sum this. So, a Taylor series is essentially an infinite sum that approximates a function. We'll do a proof on it some other time. And in fact, I actually covered a, I actually learned a proof of it uh, during a meeting that I had at Brown University a few months ago. So, what we use the Taylor series for is pretty clever. So essentially, it states that f of x is equal to f of 0 plus well, divided by 0 factorial, which is defined to be 1, plus f of 1. No, not f of 1. That would be dumb. f prime of 0 times x over 1 factorial, which is also 1, plus f prime prime of 0 times x squared over 2 factorial, which is 2, plus f triple prime of 0 times x cubed over 3 factorial, which is 6, and so on and so forth. So, this continues on and on forever as an infinite series. And it turns out it converges pretty quickly for most functions. 
So now you probably see where the motivation with all the repeating exponents comes from. But does it actually have something on the other side over here? Well, we'll find out just, just right now. So the answer is actually yes. That function is 1 plus x to the minus 2. How can we see this? Well, let's try taking the derivative once. So taking the derivative once to get this is going to give... Oh, right. Minus 2 times 1 plus x to the minus 3 by the power rule. By the chain rule, any derivative that comes from inside is just disregarded. So then taking the derivative again puts this over here, makes this 6. But do you see what's going on here? We have 1 times minus 2 times minus 3 times minus 4 times minus 5. So this is going to become the factorial sequence. Admittedly, it gives you minus 2 factorial, then 3 factorial, minus 4 factorial, plus 5 factorial, etc. So uh, it should be apparent from here, this is 1 factorial, this is minus 2 factorial, this is 3 factorial, and so on and so forth. Now, how is this useful? Well, for exactly one reason. What happens when we plug in minus 1? So, well, no, what happens when we plug in 0? Minus 1 would make these all undefined. So once we plug in 0, like seen here, we just get minus 2 times 1 to the minus 3. 6 times 1 to the minus 4. So Euler was really just searching for a function such that its derivatives at 0 had the values of the factorials, etc. So so like 1 minus 2 plus 6 if we were doing the triple derivative, it would be minus 24, and so on and so forth. So, Euler was searching for this, and he found it in 1 over 1 plus x squared. So, then we apply this all to get, let's formalize this a little bit by now saying that f n of 0, and this is meant to represent the nth derivative, so f0 of 0 would just be the original function, it's equal to 1, well, we don't really care about the 1 term anymore, I suppose, it's just negative 1 to the n times n plus 1 factorial. So this it's really important because now, once you divide it by these factorials, would just so happen to be n factorial, and then multiply by x to the n, what do you get? Well, these cancel and provide n plus 1 to get minus x to the n times n plus 1. And doesn't that look oddly familiar? Uh, oh, I never actually wrote the series down. So let's put it over here. 1 minus 2x plus 3x squared minus 4x cubed, etc. So this looks a little familiar, doesn't it? Especially with the exponent being one less than the actual thing. So uh, then all we need to do to satisfy this is just plug in So we have minus x to the n times n plus 1, etc., etc., etc. And all we have to do to satisfy this is just plug in x equals positive 1 in order to have what we want, which is 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4. But wait a second. 
this Taylor expansion is equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared. So what happens when we plug 1 into that? Get 1 over 1 plus 1 squared, which is, surprisingly, 1 over 4. So then, this can be extended to some other sums, the most famous of which, the Ramanujan sum, which Ramanujan himself summed more rigorously, but we can uh, get a heuristic sense for how he did it with this summation. So let's say it's equal to some number n. Then, one might notice that if we subtract double this, which is 4, then double this, which is 8, then double 6, which is minus 12, so on and so forth, we will get the negative series that we were just talking about. And we know this is 1 4. But what's crucial is that this is pretty obviously just minus 4n. So that means that n minus 4n equals 1 4. So minus 3n equals 1 4. And n equals minus 1 12. Now this, of course, isn't the full story, but it's a nice way to understand why this sum of the natural numbers is true. Well, true in a sense. As Euler once said, well, I'm just paraphrasing, I have realized in a time before now, okay, no, please. As Euler once said, I have realized in a previous time that we need to extend the definition of the sum. Uh, and that's in fact what he said uh, before saying 1 plus two, one minus 2 plus 3 minus 4, etc. is 1 fourth. Uh, he said, I admit this is strange. Well, uh, you could read the entire quote. His works are now in the public domain. Uh, but uh, these divergent theories are pretty interesting, and I hope you learn something from seeing their derivation. All right, have to head out now. Goodbye.